So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle in the ongoing tournament. So I figured it would be a good idea to show another one of these series in round one. Um, and it's going to be between two pairs of different players today. Although, it is going to be on the same initial pitch battle map that we saw previously. And I think this is the only choice for pitch battle maps in the tournament as a result of it having sort of a very deliberate setup. It's got terrain and all of that sort of thing, so it's not quite as boring as it would be on the grassy plain, for example, but it does give a sort of standardised feel to a lot of the pitch battles that we see. Um, so yeah, we will continue as we did last time, starting off with the blue team, and the blue team made up of Sprints over here, and his partner, going to be playing as Rudauer, is Buzzard. And over on the other side of the battlefield today, we have T.S. Niehoff and his partner, Tommy the Rage Quitter. So, let's see what's going on on this side of the field then. Kazadum. So we saw the dwarves utilised in the previous series, albeit in the siege battle on the second battle for that particular series. Kazadum, meanwhile, I mean, obviously a lot of quality going to be involved in their army. The dwarves tend to be a little bit slower, a little bit more plodding on open field battles such as this, but... Certainly if you can force large-scale engagements and limit the width of them, then the dwarves will tend to be very domineering in such battles. Fourth Legion Shield Guard on the flank for sprints, with the armour upgrades as well. So certainly investing heavily into individual units here, which makes a certain amount of sense. If you're going to go for the dwarves, then doubling down on that particular aspect does make a certain amount of sense. Blocking off this side passageway as well from any sort of cavalry to move forward. You can see here the blue team initially at the very least are intent on utilising the terrain to keep some of their units in cover. We have the very, very dangerous Mithril Guard, of course, very, very tanky. If it comes down to individual might to get them over the line, then the Dwarves should be okay, albeit there are there is some quality on the opposite side of the field as well. Orc Hunters of Khazad-dum for the long range component, three units of them, maybe a little bit more conventional than the last pitch battle in the tournament battle we saw previously where it was significantly more about artillery and cavalry um, but one thing which many players do tend to fall back on is the utilization of archers like this to try and control in particular the early pace of the battle the orc hunters do a decent amount of damage they can be counter skirmished and it'll be interesting to see if that's what the red team decide to do with the armies they are bringing to the table today Again, armour upgrades on their Legion units, the 3rd Legion Infantry, standing in the midst of all of these pikes, the sentries of Khazad-dum, so these pike blocks, well, phalanx blocks really, with the shielded infantry just in front of them, makes for a good strong point of infantry, but like I said, the Dwarven units are relatively small, um, and they're relatively slow as well, so if you can force an engagement, then that's all well and good, but if you can't, they could get outmaneuvered. And we also have the very, very powerful First Legion Pikes in terms of damage dealing potential, perhaps the best Pikes that the game has to offer against certain foes. Um, although I think both of the red team factions, they are slightly lighter in nature, so it will just be their stats, really, the, th the First Legion Pikes that are the important thing. Artillery also being utilised, the Dwarven Catapult crew here with the Dwarven Catapult itself. So plenty of ranged potential here. Forcing the enemy towards their solid front line is probably what the dwarves have in mind here. Um, but they don't really have the capacity for a plan B. That was key in the last series that we saw. And the dwarves, if it fails initially, they don't really see what else they're supposed to do. But their ally here, Buzzard, has also brought a catapult. So they should have the ability to continue the artillery barrage, even if the red team wish to contest that. Barbarian catapult there. Once again, Phalanx Force on the front line, the Framiline Pikeman with the Rudar Swordsman, of course. This is, from an individual perspective, not going to be quite as effective as the Dwarven variant of this, but it is more numerous and it is cheaper, so Rudar are going to be able to invest into other things as well, whereas the Dwarves don't really have a great deal else beyond what they have already made on their front line. Witch Realm Enslavers, we saw them in the last battle um, as well. Rudar, of course, were on the last pitch battle that we saw. Which Realm Enslavers will be hoping to have a better time of it this time. Obviously they are potentially very damaging, but again, more so against armoured forces. And as we'll see by the Reds in a moment, not so heavily armoured. Rudar Clansmen guarding the flank, so keen on making sure no cavalry can wrap around them initially. Making sure they've got that defence. This may be going a little bit far. 
I mean, this, uh, this is a very narrow stretch. If the cavalry can get all the, right, all the way around here, you've got bigger problems, I think, than uh, just having one unit of spears marshal marshal their presence. Granite Eye Nobles here as well. We saw them in the last battle. I mean, they had a good time of it initially. They are a little bit more flimsy, perhaps, when it comes to their defensive values than equivalent knights from many other factions, but they do have that aggressive armor-piercing attack in melee. Atomore's Troll Hunters for some javelins as well. That is pretty much it for them. So let's move on, shall we, to the red team. T.S. Nihoth playing as Harad. Again, the Phalanx combination, this time of the upgraded Serpent Guard, along with the Southron Pikemen. So in terms of line infantry, that's better than what Rudar have, but in terms of pikes, it's worse. But kind of similar. I mean, Harad and Rudar have got similar focuses as factions overall anyway. But this gives them that uh, reliable front line, reliable enough. Just in behind some javelins as well, who have beast hunters. It looks as though Harad have placed more stock in their javelins today. So the red team may have a vested interest in getting up close and personal to the dwarves and to Rudawa. Not a huge amount of archers from Rudawa from initial glance, though they could be hidden, of course. Skilltrom formation for these Haradrim spearmen. Here in this circular formation, we've got the Muhad Berserkers. Of course, armor piercing may not be too useful against the Reds, but it will be useful against the Blues, given how armored the Dwarves tend to be, though melee defense on stuff like the Muhad Berserkers is very limited. <coughs> Black Serpent Bodyguard, very quick, very damaging. They probably don't want to get involved in a melee skirmish with the Franodine Nobles, um, but of course, a few good charges. They need to be careful because of the sheer amount of pikes and spears that the blue team have. It may be difficult to use the Black Serpents, you may have to bide your time and wait. Demons of the Desert, potentially exceptionally damaging of course, if they can get into the right position they can absolutely rip through the pike based defences that the blues tend to seem to be laying on. And then as if that wasn't enough, the Muma Kill as well. So again, the Muma Kill, will this prove to be a good move? I mean it's a risky move for sure, um, certainly if they can get going, if they can start really bulldozing their way through the blue team and considering how small in particular the dwarven army is, that disruption could be key, but the pikes could also be the perfect remedy for the Muma kill. Now then, we also have Tommy here playing as Mirkwood. We saw them in the last battle as well, and just like the last pitch battle actually, it's going to be Mirkwood facing off against Rudauer. On that occasion, more due to the battlefield battle as it unfolded as a whole, Mirkwood were able to get the better of the men of the north, but We'll see if that's the case this time around. Upgraded Hiri Ek, very reliable front line as we saw last time, of course. Stuff like the Hiri Lang were incredibly effective against the Rudawa infantry. So that will be something that they have against them once more. The very dangerous Palace Guard, which were presence in the latter portion to really help them win that battle. Will that be the case here as well? Interesting to see. Rather than the melee cav well, lance cavalry that Mirkwood used effectively last time around, this time they're going to be going for their horse archers, the Mirkwood border guard. Obviously, if Rudau do not have any hidden archers skulking around the place, which they could, we saw ambushes from Mirkwood last time in the trees just in front, then unreturned fire means that you know these elves are going to be able to do damage freely. And that's a real problem for a force like uh, Rudal. They're going to need to rely on the Dwarven Archers to help keep them safe, I think. Elven Kingsguard as well. I mean, certainly in terms of foot archers, Mirkwood are always going to have the beating of Rudal. But that's certainly the case if they have absolutely no response to it. Hiri Lang over there as well. And some Elder Royal Council at the front with those Silverthorn Arrows. There could very well be hidden units from both Harad and Mirkwood and Rudal, of course. But without further ado, let's get this show on the road. It's going to be interesting to see who makes the first move. I mean, you would imagine, just based on the extreme long-range option that the catapults of the blue team have, that they would be the ones to force the red team to come to them. But even here, with how far away the two teams are from one another, the catapult is not going to be able to hit them from here. And just moving forward a little bit. What they'll want to do, of course, I'm sure, is to make sure that these terrain features on this side of the map act as a sort of natural choke point so that they can keep the battlefield a little bit smaller based on the kind of composition that the dwarves are working with, although they can't fully rely on having an outright quality advantage in melee purely because they're also going to be facing off against the elves. So it's not the be-all and end-all to try and make the battlefield as small as possible, try and marshal the flanks as well. They also, to be honest, I don't really think they need to be utilising the spears 
in the way that they're doing here and even over on this side really. The Moomer kill of course can come around the flank and so can the Merkwood border guard. There could be other hidden cavalry units as well I suppose but they have enough that they can use the spears simply as the rear line of infantry I think and then focus the rest of their power up front try and use the catapults to draw the enemy towards them. If they're facing off against a force like the Rohirrim force the last time, we saw, or the last uh, pitch battle in this tournament we saw, then I would understand the need for large spear wars a little bit more. The late game presence there was important. Champions of Nafrat were hidden in and amongst the lines as well. Obviously big armor piercing damage could be a real problem for the dwarves. One of the few units of infantry they will be genuinely scared of in a 1v1 on this occasion. Serpent archers moving forward, they have also revealed themselves poison projectiles. More likely to be of use against Rudauer, and of course Rudauer still without their... Or looking like they don't have much of an archer presence. I mean, having a look around, have any revealed themselves? Still just some troll hunters. I mean, two units of troll hunters rather than just the one gives them that little bit extra upfront punch. I mean, just the fact that the orc hunters are starting to spread out to also encompass the Rudal front line would suggest that this was a conscious decision made by both players. The dwarves to handle the long range, Rudal to try and handle the short range. I mean, even Khazad Dum, though, I mean, these guys. They do offer more damage, as far as a regular archer goes, outside of the rangers Rudal have. They offer more damage than all of the rank and file Rudal archers, but... They're still not ideal from a skirmishing perspective. You'd still back something like the Serpent Archers, certainly anything that Merc would have in their repertoire. Within Realm Axemen revealing themselves, giving Merkwood a bit more of a well-rounded feel, of course. They were also pretty damn good against Rudauer last time around. I mean, from a melee standpoint, Merc would match up to Rudauer very, very well. Also from a melee standpoint, I mean, Harad, they can't rely on quality, of course. The Dwarves would still fancy their chances outlasting them, but with the armor piercing they have at their disposal, they're a better match for Khazad-dum than many others in the game. So, the blue team here, I think they will need their artillery decisions to pay off. They also need, I think, their defensive position, maybe, to do a bit of the heavy lifting for them. Again, that Muma kill pick. I think it's two Muma kill as well that they've decided to bring. So that is a big investment of money. It could be. It's all in how you use them, I suppose. ever further forward, Hiriak. Armor upgraded, big shields, but it would still be super tempting, surely, for the dwarves to start shooting into this unit the minute they get into range. Deliberate movements from the red team there. Not terribly surprising, given the artillery, that they're being a little bit cautious. Starting to see the artillery open up now. Banking those shots. Not a terrible amount of damage inflicted, but it is a reminder for Tommy that now that he is in range of the artillery, if any of his units bunch up too much, the blues will be ready to take advantage of that. It's going to be a difficult nut to crack this. When you look at it from the red team's perspective, they're going to have to deal with the archers initially. They're going to have to deal with the artillery peppering them up, and even when they get through that, this is a very well-prepared defence. <clears throat> but, if that's the level of damage per volley that the artillery is doing, then they would be well within their rights to simply sit here and soak that up. Catapults are very expensive, after all. sort of thing which you can force the enemy to come towards you, but as long as they're prepared like this, it's not the end of the world. Serpent archers creeping forwards. In conjunction with all of the Merkwood archers, they should have the beating, really, of the Orc Hunters on the front line. In terms of back and forth, it might be more efficient for the blue team if that engagement were to happen, though, based just based on how expensive the Merkwood archers actually are. 
forcing the only long range option, the blues have to be the catapults, would probably be worthwhile, I think. Again, positioning is really everything. And the Orc Hunt is now opening up as well. Just about in range. Serpent Archers represent the best Harad have when it comes to a skirmishing archer. Again, just the one casualty inflicted by an artillery barrage. The Red Team will continue to be okay with that as long as they don't take flush damage. Now the 4th Legion Shield Guard starting to retreat after all the vast, vast majority of the Harad army has identified this as the weaker part of the line, and unsurprisingly as well, going right up the throat like this, into the pikes and into the archers and into the artillery doesn't make any sort of sense. But this is dangerous because the Harad forces, as they start to scurry behind the terrain features that the blue team are trying to use to their advantage, they are bul like bulking up a little bit. Hits from the catapult could yet prove to be very, very costly for them. Serpent Guard, Champions of Nafarat. South Ron's making their way across. I mean, of course, the Catapult could take the risky move of trying to go after the Moomer Kill. They're big enough targets that it's a reasonable chance that you could hit them. That's such a big investment that they've made here as well. Meanwhile, Woodland Realm Axemen scurrying up onto the hill, so this is partially traversable. Getting some archers up onto this uh, high ground would be a bit of a problem for Buzzard as well. This is always the thing. I mean, it was a very well-prepared and scary looking defence from the front, but the red team are doing exactly the right thing here by deciding to try and not engage with it for as long a period of time as possible. Try and pressurise the squishier flanks first and foremost. Black Serpent Bodyguard turn around over here for now. Of course, they could turn around and try and charge into the Orc Hunters straight up. They take damage on the approach and they need to be careful of the nearby stakes. It's interesting. Are the artillery pieces getting destroyed? What from? There's a friendly fire? I don't would have thought so, based on the... Uh, very peculiar there. Should have been paying closer attention to that, I suppose. Serpent archers, again, getting up onto this high ground. These hills, not fully, but partially traversable, and getting onto some high ground with their archers on both flanks would definitely be useful. And they're sort of constantly on the retreat at this point. The blue team. The further back they go, more into a corner they paint themselves and that's all well and good but again, if, it's, if not for this artillery all they would be doing would be backing themselves into a corner for the elves to do damage to them freely they're still waiting on a fortuitous hit here and they are not going to get it just yet the setup phase of this battle has been fairly lengthy, but it's been probably what will be the key thing worth talking about later on. Serpent archers starting to fire away. I think they're going after the Atomore's troll hunters. A few other units getting hit in for the deal as well. I mean, personally, going after the pikes might be the thing to do. The only phalanx units that the red team have after all are the south front pikemen, and they're going to be in, well, they're no match really for anything that either Rudal or Khazad-dum have. So you're going to need to do damage with them with something. Archers, both of the attackers today, as well, I guess as they are now. Catapults again missing. Orc hunters at the very least in a position now where they can return fire into the Serpent Archers. Serpent Archers looking like they might try and retreat, although I really don't see the point in that. The Serpent Archers are sort of designed for this kind of warfare. And they're also getting some uh, extra support from... Well, that was very lucky on the Moomakill there, but the Moomakill Archers also 
starting to fire in. Skirmishing back and forth like this is fine for the red team, like I said, if, if it continues it's the sort of battle they should win, and if all of the Orc Hunters are over at Serpent Guard as well, it gives the Mirkwood Elves carte blanche to really do as they please, and that should be something which they take full advantage of. If anything, the Dwarven Archers should be over here trying to prevent the Mirkwood Archers from doing what they please, rather than the Haradrim ones. Firing into the front, this is where the shields on those Ranadine Pikemen will start to really pay dividends as well. More artillery barrages. I mean, so far, the catapults haven't really done much of note. And I mean, the catapults are the most expensive thing that the blue team have invested in, and there's a real focus of their army. The Boomer kill, the same thing for the reds, really. Again, charging into the flank here. We are clansmen. And then moving away again. Bit peculiar, that. Four casualties only. Blackwalds. Again, with a bit of archer support, though, the Blackwalds wouldn't really be all that intimidating, because you'd be able to rip them asunder. And uh, very, very quickly, that's what Tommy is trying to do with his Mirkwood border guard. Again, no foot archers to be able to withstand the attentions of horse archers is a real problem for them. And the Blackwalds are a very obvious target. The armor piercing isn't so useful against Mirkwood, but they're still a multiple HP, heavy hitting shock infantry unit with a lot of damage potential. And if you can take that away from them without them being able to do much. It's a big loss. So far, I prefer the way the red team have started. They've backed themselves into a little bit of a corner here. The Rajram Spearman. Still waiting, still. Kind of bank their shots, utilise the terrain to their advantage, but unfortunately it's just, I think it's more making their shots less accurate well, actually, no, both both sides, it's not really cover at all. They're just perfectly able to arc their shots into one another. Hurrah, definitely on the receiving end of a losing skirmish fight for the time being. East Hunter's close by. But like I said, Harad should be looking to try and keep... I mean, there's no need for three units of all Hunters to be over here. At least one needs to be giving Rudar a little bit of support at the very least. Important losses being sustained. Elven King's Guard as well, continuing to fire into the juicy target that is the Blackwalds. More and more of them falling away as they try and retreat. Two units. It's kind of big investment of money to bring two units of Blackwalds. Not as big as two catapults, but still, with really no kills to show for it for the moment, and continuing to do the business. Ranadine Noble was on the way across now, so this will be an interesting moment, because Mirkwood don't have that much in the way of obvious answers to a catapult unit like this, but harassing them with the horse archers and then using the spears as a ward for said horse archers is probably the way Tommy is going to try and handle this. The Black Bolt's thinking of turning back around, I mean that's all well and good, but it does mean that they're just going to be in range of the King's Guard for that much longer. More and more of them falling away. Louis Lang still here. They decided to cease firing onto the very front line here. Just a little bit of damage done, mostly to standard Rudar Swordsman. Rudar won't be too concerned about that. The catapults probably still have ammunition, but they've used a fair amount of it already. Both sides waiting for the opportune moment. Big commitments of units only really going to start to happen when one side is sure there's a lot to be gained. Still firing away. Blank shot there. Only now getting some damage done. Serpent archers have been... Well, they're still healthy enough, really, to be doing some damage. Playing the long game. The long game is something Harad can afford to play a little bit more than Khazadum, I think. They've got the numbers. I think the cavalry is going to be key, though, as soon as this portion of the battle is done. As soon as the Moomakill and the Black Serpent bodyguards start marauding around the lines, how effective are they going to be? Because it could be, in spite of the slightly uncomfortable situation the Blues find themselves in at the moment, they can afford to outlast simply because of some of these riskier picks. Meanwhile, Rudau now moving forward. 
getting involved in a melee engagement, the Woodland Realm Axemen will be quite happy to take on, especially unupgraded Rudar Clansmen. The Black Bolt's on the way back in now. That's a little bit more concerning for them. The Mirkwood Border Guard still. I mean, a fair amount of the Mirkwood arrows have been expanded on the Black Bolt at this point. I mean, fair enough. They are a dangerous unit after all, but you want to leave some of your archers, you would think, to deal with the vast amount of pikes that the blues do have at their disposal. Wooden Realm Axemen could move down. I mean, ultimately, the Wooden Realm Axemen are not the worst unit to send in against the Black Ones, especially softened up as they are. Berserker-class units, when they lose their HP, when they're all bloodied up, their low melee defense is a massive issue. Rudauer continuing to struggle. This matchup that we've seen once in this tournament already before. And Rudauer sending more and more units across. Now Javelins for Rodham Javelins, you would imagine to be one of the prime targets for the Merkwood Border Guard. Need to be a little bit careful. Yeah, now they now they start attacking them for Rodham Javelins, of course. Deadly with their javelins, and then also pretty potent in melee as well, the sort of thing which Merck would be hoping to deny Rudawa. Having to retreat now the border guard as the Rudawa clansmen start to squish in from the side. And now Hiriak in and amongst the Rudawa clansmen, Hiri Lang really ought to be going after the Atonmore's Troll Hunters. That's an interesting miss, that from Tommy, because if the Troll Hunters are able to get into the side of the line and do some real damage, although Buzzard getting a little bit too close and actually getting engaged in melee, both sides at this point, I think we're starting to see a key part of the battlefield really start to take shape. I, you know, I was going to say, the Dwarves at this point, considering what... Rudar are doing on the other side. If they just sit here and wait, Harad will be all too happy to let them, I think. Either they need to send over some support for Rudar in their endeavours against the elves, or they need to take the fight to Harad and try and beat them, so that they can then turn around and maybe send some support after that is done. A little bit staggered here. Orc Hunter's doing some damage to Harad as they now crest the hill. Big moment, this. Harad now choosing to engage as well. Serpent Guard going up against the upgraded 4th Legion. It's a big ask for the Harad infantry to take on the quality of the Dwarves here. It's individual units where Harad can really bring some pain to the more organised Dwarven blocks. Mimikil on the way forwards, just having a look on the other side. I mean, there's still those Rudauer blocks on the front line, but they may as well be moving them at this point. Atomore's Troll Hunters on the retreat. Not too surprisingly, this uh, force on the flank from Rudar is starting to fall away. Mirkwood Border Guard. Vranodine Nobles really ought to be thinking about charging in at this point, doing some real damage to the elves. I mean, I know they're spears, but they are a little bit scattered. Mirkwood Border Guard. Uh, the Elder Pathfinders have revealed themselves, so that is a unit which, one to one, will fancy its chances against the Nobles. Horse Archer's just about going to get away and do some damage in response as well. They find themselves a little bit marooned. And also, the Elder Royal Council. I think they're going to park their border guard in the way of the Royal Council because they're more dain or more of a useful unit later on. Now also, the Elven King's Guard. It's a, it's a tough one. Mirkwood definitely in the ascendancy there against Rudal. And meanwhile, Harad... Muma kill. they need to keep moving, they can't afford to get bogged down in the 4th Legion Shield Guard. Meanwhile, Beast Hunters up on the hill, and the throwing axes from the Troll Shores as well. So Rudal is sending support over to the Dwarves. Probably the right thing to do, because Merkwood being in the Ascendancy, one unit of throwing axes is probably not going to be enough to see them victorious. So to try and maybe finish off Harad is the right thing to do, the Rudal General falls. That morale debuff going to be pretty serious business. The quality of the dwarves on the front line, though, looking good. Demons of the desert. I mean, they can get into position. I mean, clearly the javelin's trying to go after the 
almost bulletproof Nethril Guard. Victory seems certain. Taking some damage at the hands of the Javelins. The Demon's not able to get a shot off, which could be key. There's also units arriving from around the other side. Kazadum going to envelop Harad. Whatever happened to the Mumakil? They're in the trees at the back, but I mean, T.S. Niehoff doesn't really have the luxury of... Ooh, and finally, finally the Catapult gets a really telling shot. Admittedly, not into the finest quality of units. The Champions of Nafarat doing the business on the front line, but they're kind of the only Harad unit you would back to do so at this point in time. Black Serpent Bodyguard in behind as well, though, getting a good charge into the Troll Sharaxler and managing to bob and weave there. I think for Harad, as long as they can do a decent amount of damage to the Dwarves and what Rudawa support has been sent over here, based on what we've seen from the other side, Mirkwood looking very, very healthy. Elven armies do tend to be smaller, so when they fall away, they can fall away pretty fast, but... Mirkwood, with the level of quality they still have at their disposal, as long as Harad can do the damage against the dwarves on the other side, they would perhaps back the elves to see them over the line. Mirkwood border guard sweeping forth as well, even if they're just being used as a pure melee unit at this point, it's not really the end of the world. I mean, this unit of Pathfinders really should be getting into the catapults at this point. It's not worth the risk of allowing the catapult some uh, some good hits, especially given how condensed that force is over there. But once again, no, not getting the rub of the green really with their artillery in this game. Only one telling hit, like we said. And with such a big monetary investment into artillery like that, you need it to do more central part of their defense. The Mumakil, still very much alive, although admittedly, damage has been done to them. Mumakil have been effectively forced onto the retreat for quite a while, being used as regular horse archers, really. Etamor's Troll Hunt is a good answer to Elephant Clash units like this. Rudar Swordsmen on their way across, as are the Franodyne Pikemen. I mean, having a look at this, though, Harad have crumbled in perhaps even more comprehensive a fashion than Rudauer did on the other side. A little bit of Rudauer support to the dwarves here may prove to be absolutely key because, I mean, by the time Merc would arrive, Harad, I mean, they may have their Mumakil and their Black Serpents, but they're going to have nothing in terms of rank and file support for Merkwood. Whereas Rudauer and Kazadum still have something that constitutes an army. It may be too much for Tommy to do. Harad. Maybe acting as an anchor rather than a sail here. I mean, Merkwood going to finish off the Barbarian Catapult for sure. As much as the Catapult has been a bit of a disappointment, so too have the Mumakil. And that could yet prove to be a real killer. It might depend on how much ammunition Merkwood still have left in terms of their archers. How much damage are they able to do still to key targets. Elder Pathfinders, Merkwood Border Guard. Still, the cavalry, the mobility in this battle has always been in favour of the red team. Thirty-four Mithril Guard alive. Demons of the Desert dealt with. Champions of Nafarat dealt with. A lot of pikes still alive. Real problem for Merkwood unless they can. All of that ammunition dumped into the black folds earlier on. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Is that still the case? One Moomakill there. I think the other unit is still alive. Indeed, all three of the other Moomakill still stomping around the battlefield. The border guard won't have any ammunition, I'm sure, but it can still be used as standard cavalry. There's still a lot of spears, a lot of pikes be difficult for them. More damage being done. Hits being landed, but if there is a force, just generally that you would imagine would be able to withstand a load of venomous archer fire, it would be one of the dwarven ones. Trying 
to box themselves in tactical geometry but they've earned the right to do this at this point it's a risk of course because if Merc would have enough ammunition left especially from stuff like Silverthorn arrows the amount of damage they could do just by dumping all of their remaining ammunition in could be enough and as soon as they reach that threshold that's when the Muna kill actually the remaining Muna kill could yet prove to be the difference maker in a way that the artillery for the blue team was not. Another close battle this. Very much in the balance. Elder Royal Council moving forward, I mean getting very bold because they're very close at this point to these units. I mean if the Pranadine Nobles choose to come out I guess they will be stomped immediately by Pathfinders and Border Guard. They really chosen the, not so much the hill they wish to die on, but the, in the shade of a hill they wish to die on. Elven archers going to surround them entirely. I think this uh, Muma kill still, with all the ammunition they possibly have. Nice up the line as well, and it's not as if they can really do anything to prevent this because they need to keep these front lines solid in case Merkwood do decide they wish to attack. Hits being landed on sentries. I don't know whether they have enough though, I don't know whether they're actually killing the dwarves at a fast enough rate given how quickly ammunition tends to go down. Eerie Lang. Merkwood Border Guard still. If that cavalry can get in and amongst here, it could be so, so dangerous. Again, the fact that a lot of the other units of Elven Archers have fallen silent is maybe a bad sign. Elder Royal Council scurrying around trying to manoeuvre for the best possible shot. I mean, one notable absence, perhaps, is the fact that the First Legion Pikes don't seem to be present anymore. Focused down, perhaps, by Harad earlier on. Which is worth mentioning, because they would be a fairly insurmountable foe in melee if they were able to keep the engagements organised. This has really been the the story of the whole battle really, it's just whether or not the blue team can weather the storm that the red team has been putting them under. The red team have been consistently able to do damage from afar, pick off targets, outmaneuver them with superior speed and unit types on horseback, but yeah, Merkwood Bordegard moving forward to act as the, uh, the shield there. Of course, a full-blooded outright assault on the blue team would never have suited the red team's needs. They've had to slowly but surely pick them off as time has gone on. But like I said, the blue team haven't really had any choice but to approach the battle in this way, because in particular the dwarven composition was so set. Like I said, plan A or, or no plan, basically. Rudar had a little bit more, but again, the lack of archers meant that they were really dependent on the Dwarves to give them a hand, and if the Blue Team do go on to lose this, I, I will maintain that one unit of Orc Hunts on the other side to at least contest the range game with the Elves might have been key. It would have bought more time for stuff like the Black Wolves and the Etanmore's Troll Hunters to maybe do a bit more damage to the Elves than they've ultimately ended up being able to do. It might not be the, the key to the battle, though. Orc Hunters thinking about charging in. They probably should, honestly. They're exposed. And these are the margins. Too late now, though. Boomer kill with some splash damage on their attacks. There's still full health palace guard as well. It really is going to be a case of whether or not those pikes can actually do the business. I don't know if they will. I think that Ultimately, the engagements will probably get a little bit fraught. There's no way I think that the blue team are going to be able to keep their phalanx lines 
fully organised, and as soon as that's the case, stuff like the, the Pathfinders and the remaining Black Serpents, surely with a little bit of extra damage, and they're also purposefully still targeting the parts of the line where there are no Pike units. It's something the red team have been very good at throughout this entire battle, not playing the game that the blue team want them to and just charging onto the end of their very long spears. Shield Guard taking a good amount of damage there from the Elven Swordsmen and Glaivemen. As soon as those Moomer Kill join the fray, I think the red team from here should have manoeuvred themselves into a position of victory, but the Dwarves have been well known to be able to dig out results from positions like this before. Woodland Realm Patrol, a few of the remaining Woodland Realm Axemen, some Silver Thorns flying into the sentries. Moomer Kill. Can't afford to dawdle too much here. Harad, the way that they lost to the Dwarves, I mean, it would be a real tragedy if the Merkwood's attack were to fail because the Moomer Kill were being saved for some moment that never comes. At least one of them is now turning around, although charging through his own men more than anything else. Piri Lang held a Pathfinders charging in to the infantry, a bit of pikes in behind them, but risks being taken and good damage being done. Finally, the well, the troll hunters bringing that Moomer kill down. Would come the Elven King's Guard, of course, those two handed axes. The Dwarven General falls, not likely to be the cause of a morale collapse, at least immediately. But the Palace Guard against the Mithril Guard. Two of the real heavyweights in the game. Very Lang, ooh, I don't know about this. Pulling units off of a front line. At this point in time, you need your strength up front. Only half the enemy the Elder Royal Council me. ripping their way through the Orc Hunts of Khazadum. Still the Moomakil dawdling around the periphery. Victory seems certain now. They need to get in there. Now is not the time for caution. Now is the time for attack. The Elves have done, I mean, they've loosened the way, but just diving on in there and disrupting the formations of all of those pikes would be enough, I think. I mean, finally they get there, and also the morale effects that having Moomakil just bulldoze through your lines has, especially on Rudal. Rudal losing their general way earlier on. Still both of the red team generals intact. That, I think, should be that. Victory seems certain for the Palace Guard. Of course, healthy in a way that the Meteor Guard were not as a result of those javelins they took earlier on. Black Serpents as well. They will no longer have the capacity for guarding against absolutely all of the cavalry units, which was always likely to be the case. Another charge. Not a huge amount of damage being done, but it turns their backs on the Axemen, allowing them to and a few more uncontested blows. That is going to be that. In the balance for a long time. But again, it's the lack of a plan B, I think. Plan A... I mean, to be fair, it wasn't clear that plan A was going to fail until right near the end here, but... Again. I'm glad that it worked out this way around, though. I'm always more in favour of teams that take the initiative and going on to the attack and using the full extent of the map, using using the width rather than the park the bus style approach that Khazadum and Rudauer on this occasion tried to make work. I mean, it's fair enough. I mean, Khazadum, that's one of the main ways in which they can play, but again, it, it made them tactically very rigid. Rudauer as well struggled against the elves again. That, ma that matchup, as we've seen in both of these two tournament pitch battles, Merkwood really have the beating of Rudauer in most, most capacities. Certainly in melee, as we've seen. Range as well, Merkwood easily able to deal with Rudauer. I mean, certainly on this occasion, Rudauer with absolutely no archer response to Merkwood. 
needed the support, I think, of at least one, probably two, honestly, of the Orc Hunters of Khazad-dum. There was no need for three units to be over here to deal with one unit of Serpent Archers. If you had all three of the Orc Hunters of khazad dealing with Mirkwood, the Poison Projectiles are not really, like, they're not very damaging, so the Dwarves can absorb them more easily than the Elven Projectiles they were faced with later on. Um, and also, it's just one unit of Archers. It's the sort of thing which Dwarves can, can deal with. It's the sort of thing that Rudar can't. Um, so I think they got that a little bit backwards, and maybe the other way around was right as well, because Rudar did send over some javelins and some throwing axe support, which resulted in Harad's collapse earlier on earlier on in the battle than it otherwise would have done. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mirkwood, certainly um, the most key player, I think, Tommy, in this battle, because he was able to pick Rudar apart, and he had enough left in the tank, ultimately, to also be able to deal with what remained of the dwarves and Rudar late on. Harad with their mounted units. Their infantry was always likely to be a bit of a sticking point, um, but it must have done enough damage to the dwarves to be at least a little bit telling later on. Stuff like the Champions of Nefrat we saw in the fray. Um, kind of hard to tell how much damage they're doing at the time, especially when they ultimately end up losing and there's a fair amount of dwarves left. But uh, let's see what did the damage for Khazadum at the very least. I mean, Mithril Guard were involved in that uh, altercation for quite a while. The Catapult 21, I mean, that was also another thing. That's not really something that you can plan too much for. I think they were taking a lot of low percentage shots with their artillery, in fairness, the uh, the blue team here today. Um, and that maybe is something they can mitigate, but ultimately artillery is one of those things where you're, you're spinning the roulette wheel to a certain extent, um, and it didn't pay off for them on this occasion. I would argue that the Moomer kill weren't exactly amazing either. Um, similar performances, so ultimately they both cancelled one another out in terms of big wastes of money but it is what it is Orc Hunters did well enough in terms of kills I mean they were doing good damage, a lot of that to Haradrim units though, by the time the Elves arrived, that was really the force they should have been fighting off against, I think that's the key tactical decision for me that uh, swung this battle the other way uh, Third Legion did reasonably well um, Sentries, First Legion Pikes were good while they were still alive but ultimately that was one of the main things that Harad ultimately were able to accomplish. We missed it completely, but they were able to kill the First Legion Pikes off. Um, Fourth Legion Shield Guard did reasonably in sentries as well. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, the victory goes to T.S. Niehoff and to Tommy the Rage Quitter. Um, commiserations to Sprints and Buzzard. And I think I also have the second battle in this particular series as well. So we will be able to see a siege battle, which I think once again is on Edoras rather than any of the... Um, alternate uh, siege maps but uh, still uh, we will continue and we shall see who goes on in this series to to win so yeah big thanks to all the players involved in this tournament game um, i hope you enjoyed this and hope you'll join me whatever is next